Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more I Was a Teenage Exo Colonist, which I've been enjoying very much. It's, uh, it's really good fun. And uh, yeah, interesting too. I don't really know where the story's going to go. I mean, a lot of people have highly praised the story I noticed on the Steam reviews, but uh, I didn't want to read any spoilers, so I didn't uh, sort of go in any further than that. So it's going to be, yeah, nice and surprising for me as and when it, as and when it happens. Let's have a quick chat with Dad, shall we? It's very blurry here. Your dad was sniffing and sniffling and sneezing pretty bad this morning. He collapsed around this time last year, so you've been feeling anxious about his health, especially now that the pollen is back. He's working hard in the fields, respirator hanging from his neck as he grunts and shovels dirt into a wheelbarrow. He sees you coming and stands up straight, coughing a little as he stretches his back. Hey kiddo, what brings you out here? Dad, you have to wear your respirator. Your dad makes blah 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 motions with his hand. I do, I do. Don't look at me like that. I'm just getting some fresh air. It's hard to breathe with that thing in. I'm racing to get these wee pixie beans in the ground, he continues. We're all set to have a great harvest in time for Vertumnalia. He leans on his shovel, tucking one foot behind the other and rocking back and forth. Truth is, I've been working like a dog. I'd love to get out of here for a while. Hey, what do you say you and I go for a little walk? He says, brightening. I know you don't get outside the... He's gone Australian now. I know you don't get outside the wall walls much either, but we could do with a little nature walk. I study all the plants the foragers bring back, but I've never really seen them in the wild. I think this is why the Australian got modelled in the last episode. They're quite close in my head to how they come out. Uh, you want to go outside? Sure, your dad says. People can want to try new things, right? Your mum doesn't see the draw. He continues, flipping his shovel up onto his shoulder and picking his way carefully out of the turned fields. She likes what she can control, you know. But there's a whole planet out there. I want to go explore. He stops and doubles over, suddenly racked with a coughing fit that makes him unable to speak. He tries a few times to catch his breath, but each time he just starts coughing harder. The pink pollen in the air swirls and eddies around you both. Uh, maybe you should stay indoors? Oh? Your dad wheezes. You're just like instance, that old stick in the mud. I, <coughs> I remember when we were younger, she was always walking around with her nose in everyone's business. She always thinks she can, she knows what's best for people. Despite his brave words, he has to hold on to you for balance as he catches his breath again. Okay, maybe now's not the best. <laughs> the best time, he gasps, finally putting his respirator back on. But, you and me, we have a date with the outside world, kiddo. I'm just taking a rain check. Who? <sighs> He says, his eyes red-rimmed and streaming from irritation. I can't wait until Unstunts figures out a treatment for this shimmer thing. She says maybe next year. Maybe the one after that. I'm going to be first in line, you bet. Whoops, what have I done? Oh, I'll talk to Dad again. Uh... Oh, we can help him do something. Okay, let's do that. Your dad sneezes and wipes his nose with a handkerchief. Whoa, this pollen, he says, his voice thick with congestion. Someday, I'm going to get used to this. Help him with the animals. Your dad is working with the float cows. One of them is sick and isn't producing enough urine as ballast, and it keeps wanting to float away. Your dad is building a spike that so he can tie her down to feel better. Uh, so we get a, plus, a four card with plus one for each gem on other cards. That's pretty cool. You hold on to the leash, feeling like a little kid with a balloon. A big, woolly, gassy balloon. It looks down at you with placid, unblinking eyes. You can see yourself refracted in them. Weird. Neat. Okay, well, let's, I mean, he didn't have things there, did he, when we spoke to him, so... Yeah, we could, um... We could try talking to people who don't have the dot 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 by them, just in case we can do anything interesting uh, with them. That's to give a present, so yeah, so we need, they do need sort of us to have particular level skills to unlock things. Oh, hey Solana, Mars says, breezing past you. I'm sorry, I can't talk now. I'm on my way to work in command. She stops when you don't sound amazed enough. You know, the supply depot, she clarified. It's the most important job in the whole colony. Anything that gets made here goes through me first. Mars's smug smile gets somehow even more smug. Plus, I get the pick of all the best stuff. Um, ignore her. <laughs> Look at her face. Mars looks at a loss for words. Th that's it? You're not impressed? OMG, what does it take? 
She stomps away, presumably to write an angry post on the colony's social media about people who just don't understand how hard she works. You roll her your eyes. Mars is angry for now, but you could try asking him for a reference later if you change your mind. I doubt it. Don't get on very well with Mars. But, in fairness, I don't think anyone does. Uh, we can see Tang. Oh, yeah, we could uh, we could study together, couldn't we? The brain requires a nearly continuous supply of glucose, Tang says. Glucose is commonly found in hood foods we register as sweet, which is why humanity has evolved to fake crave foods that are high in sugar. Tang looks up from a holopad with a thoughtful look. I have very little desire for sweetness, she muses. Does that mean my brain is more efficient than that of other humans? Want to study together? You and Tangent sync your holopalms and play a game together where you race to assemble chemical compounds using a simple programming language. Tangent is a whiz at it and it breeze and breezes through the levels, barely breaking a sweat. You can tell she's hiding a smile when she looks over your shoulder to help you with a particularly tricky algorithm. Cool. I didn't really yes, it's a good way to get cars. We obviously need to Oh are we talking to an enemy? Yeah, I think we are. An enemy is munching on a container of cut-out pieces of dust melon. My mum's kind of bossy, but she sure makes a great lunch, she says, offering you a piece. Gotta keep your strength up. We could train together. Uh, minus two to neighbouring cards, uh, neighbouring yellow cards. I mean, it is a plus five. Okay, we'll do it. On your way to the sports ball pitch, an enemy shares the story about the time her brother Com once spiked the ball so hard that he broke Utopia's nose, back when she used to play sports ball too. She describes it in gory detail. But don't go easy on me, she exclaims. That's why we have med beds, right? Plus, I might get a cool scar. She thumbs a blue scaled scar on her jaw right under her ear. Okay, we're getting some cards, increasing some relationships. Where's, uh, where's Dis? Is he chilling out? here like he does. No, he's actually not here. He's probably out on expedition. So I was thinking about, you know, maybe sort of being a bit more organised with what we do to, to rank up our skills. So we obviously have three months in a season. So I was thinking maybe we do a class in the first slot, expedition in the second slot, and uh, rest in the third slot. I think that'll work well. So is there anything in particular I'm quite close to getting a... Oh, we're quite close in tough... Well, we're not that close in toughness, actually. We're quite close in combat, I suppose. I feel like maybe we should do biology, though. Life sciences or whatever it is. I think that would be useful. Yeah, we'll do this. This week in biology class, you're learning about predators and prey. Chief Engineer Instance brings up a picture of a hop eye on the hollow projector and asks, What is this animal, and what does it do when it sees a predator? Tang's hand shoots up. They hop away very quickly. That's why we call it a hop eye. Instance shakes her head. Tang, you should know better than that. Many prey animals run away from predators. What do only hop eyes do? Tang blushes and looks down at her lap, mortified that she got a question wrong. Instance scans the class again. Anyone else? Solana? Uh, oh, we can get a little card. One duplicate when drawn. Yeah. One duplicate when drawn. Okay. They thump on the ground to warn others. You've seen hop eyes out in the wild, and you know they're very communal animals. One wouldn't run away without warning the others first. Then they'll hop away very quickly. Correct, Instance nods. Tang gives you an appraising look. Maybe she didn't expect this from you. 22, so we've got plus one to mental blue cards. Five kudos if total equals goal. It's quite nice to get the kudos, I think. Uh, so yeah, well, okay, can we can we manage that? This is this is a six. That's one big something. Alright, so if we play our blue cards. What do we end up with? I mean, that's 22. So, maybe we should just do that. Five biology, very nice. Five kudos also. How's our biology coming along? Only 17. I 
So we talked to Tang, didn't we, while she wasn't ready to talk to us. What else can we do? Okay, so we can't we can't just keep doing that. So that's fine. Uh, just a quick scan around for any thing to do to talk to. Actually, what do we need twenty biology? Okay, we haven't got twenty biology, so that's fine. Let's go out and do Oh here's this. Have you ever heard the stories about changelings? Dis muses scrolling through a book of mythology on his holopalm. Old Earth humans used to think that fairies would steal human babies and replace them with their own. He scratches his cheek. Do you think that happened with me and Tang? I think that would explain a lot. Sometimes it feels like I'm not even really human. Okay, but on that note, I dare you to eat this worm. <laughs> oh yeah, discount as well. I double dare you to eat a worm. You can't just turn down a double dare. You're no meek little hop eye. <laughs> Slimy, unsatisfying, very, very gross. Dis eats his like a noodle, slurping it up and wrinkling his nose as it wriggles in his mouth. Oh, yuck, he says, swallowing it whole, then shows you his empty mouth. You should have known better than to dare a person who fears nothing. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so let's see what we can do about an expedition. I don't know, I just want to do nearby. We, we should go out and survey the plains again. Ten events remaining. Seven collectibles remaining. Boss event remaining. Cool. Yeah, we'll go do this again. Uh, I think if we speak to Utopia, that probably ends the session or whatever. However you would, whatever you would call it. I think we went east last time. Let's go, let's go north from Utopia this time and see if there's, if there's much up around this way. Uh... Okay, actually, there isn't. I don't think we can get up through this stuff. No, it's all a bit thick. Alright, well, we'll carry on around this way then. Oh, there's a one there. Let's do that. Drifts of, spo uh, drifts of spark snow make this area hard to pass through. Your feet keep sinking into it and you have to work to get them free with every step. The only way forward here is through an especially deep area. Oh, we'll take a break and play in it. Oh, adds five stress. You make a real, you make a snow buddy. Or at least you try. The tiny blue crystals don't pack together very well and the stuff quickly melts just from the heat of your body. The acidic snow gives you a hot scratchy rash between your fingers. Uh, you probably should have worn gloves. You appraise your lumpy snow buddy. It looks a little sad. Maybe it just needs some accessories. With some twigs and grass and a weird kind of jelly you find seeping out of the ground, you give your buddy antlers and fur. It kind of looks like a snow bush bub. How are we doing for the stress? So, yeah, we've got, we got quite a lot still we can do. Stuff over there on the other side of that river. Okay, there's one there. I'm just having a quick poke down here. I think I probably came this way before. Kind of feels like it. One of your jobs as a surveyor is to document the flora and fauna through photographs. You've spotted a small animal in the crook of a tree. It's so perfectly camouflaged you can only really see it when it breathes. You've got a camera built into your holopalm, but it's not equipped to capture difficult shots like this. You'll need to put in the work. I mean... I suppose, what do we want to raise more? Perception, we're nearly at another um, uh, perk for perception. One slot will turn cards physical red. Okay. It's quite a tough challenge. Another one that's going to become red. Uh, don't have a four. I mean, we can make a four, but I'd rather not spend the. 
consumables. We could do three. Okay, we've only got four slots, so we could do two pair, maybe. Or two. We want to like maximize this, don't we? So what could we do? Three, 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 four, four. Three. Oh, that's going to make uh, a plus five, isn't it? This is a super goal. We can add, I mean, we can add more. How about that? Yeah, we're only one off the max. Two perception. Oh, we've got, oh yeah, we wanted perception, didn't we? Are we at a perk? Maybe. You climb up a tree and get an angle from above, not disturbing your subject. It comes out great. Very avant-garde. Utopia is glad for the shot. Okay, so we're at 50, so we could do three more. I guess we'll do these ones. The terrain here is strange. Some kind of smooth rock covered in lichens and tiny plants. It's weirdly warm and the spark snow smelts when it hits it. Uh, we could carefully move over it. Card becomes red, physical. Minus two to neighbouring cards. Do just that and get the gems. If we did that. Okay, how about two, three, four, five? How did that make that minus two? Uh, is that going to go zero? Oh, I don't know. How's that? Okay, could have got 32 apparently. I think we're at the level of another perk now on perception. Maybe that only happens at the change of the month. After cautiously walking around on it for a few minutes and observing quietly, you realise the ground is alive. It's rumbling very slightly. What you thought was just a rock slowly opens. It's an eye. It stares at you dreamily and you stare back, fascinated. This must be a very ancient creature. It's so vast. It's completely merged into the surroundings. There are even trees growing out of it. A little animal, like a moth with huge webbed feet, lands between you and the massive eye and starts preening. The eye dilates to focus on the moth. Then it slowly closes again in what you think might be contentment. After a minute, you feel a faint rumble under your feet. Regular breathing in and out. Snoring. You creep off the creature, careful not to wake it again. Do that question mark. Let's just grab this. You stop to watch a herd of shaggy, purple furred animals slowly meander down a slope. You've never seen them before. We'll study them. Five kudos if total equals goal. Okay, we'll try and do that. Uh, I guess we go.
two, three, four. Okay. Uh, four threes. I think we'll do that then. And we'll do it in little colour pairs. Ah, oh, no, that's going to go four, isn't it? Arr, switch those. Okay, so our goal is 14 here. I mean, 10 and 4. <laughs> now that's 17, so what's happened there? Oh, because of the bonuses. All right. Well, we can, we can change that. So now it's 14. So we've got 5 kudos on perception, which actually has the perk line now. The creature's fur is like grass, so they must be a kind of photosynths, an animal that gets part of their energy from the sun. They couldn't be absorbent photosynths, bush bubs, because they've got branches growing out of their heads and backs. You check your survey journal. It says bush bubs are common here, but they're smaller solitary creatures, so nope. And they're too small to be balneal photosynths, so you usually don't leave the water. We found a new species. Maybe, that would be cool. You decide to name them just in case. You look at them through your holoculars at maximum zoom. You can kind of make out that they have super long jaws, like a huge underbite. You name them... I'll name them sunbaskers. Naming things is hard, so sunbaskers will have to do. You log your discovery. Cool. New perk, here we go. Collectibles respawn faster and more slots are filled. Okay. So I think we can do one more, and then we'll head back. Ooh, that's, that's, that's a bush bub. Let's see what he's got to say for himself. You spot some familiar looking fruit. Hey, you've seen this bush before. That's no rock underneath. It's all part of one creature, an aborescent photosynth. Bush bub. It pays you no attention, continuing to blend in with the rest of its surroundings like a boulder. Should we pick the fruit? You're not letting it get away with being delicious. Oh, wow. You grab some of the fruits as the bush bub rises up and roars with anger. Yep, you knew it wouldn't be happy. Uh, we're going to calm it down. We're not going to fight it. Uh, so we want to try and equal 47. Hmm. We could do a four, four, four. Ah, that turned into a six. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, that's fine. Uh. Oh, we could do a two, two, two. Twenty-one. We can probably do that. So we have five, five, five. Is that going to make it a three this time? It doesn't seem to do what I expect it to do. Oh, so yellow cards. I keep forgetting that. That thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not exact. So let's get rid of that. We need nine. So we'll do three, three, three. Although we'll probably have to mm, switch something here. Uh, how about that? 21. There we go. Kudos animals. You soothe the bush bud, but it doesn't seem interested in letting you have any of its fruit. Could, this, could it be the same one you harvested the last time? It lumbers off into the forest. Okay, so we'll probably head back. We're at 95 stress, so I'd rather go and uh, speak to Utopia and go back that way rather than just have it shut us down. Uh, there's another thing here, so we'll leave that for next time. We'll just retrace our steps and go back to Utopia. 
I feel like this has been quite a successful expedition for us. I think she's just sort of around here. That's not a collectible, is it? No. Oh, have to go this way. When you boarded the expedition's autobus this morning, you didn't know what to expect. It trundled you and the other surveyors a few clicks north to the Prosaic Plains, a high flat area with cooler weather than your colony. You could barely control your excitement as you watched the landscape change. And now you're here. You're finally old enough for a real survey mission away from the colony, so obviously we should have done this first. I just didn't want to get uh, sent back. You greet Chief Surveyor Utopia at the depot. This is a plaza cu plaz cutter. She says, handing one, it's a tool for cutting and heating things. You can use it to make a fire, cauterize a wound, boil water, and it cuts some materials pretty all right. Uh, you can use it for self-defense too, but I, I don't suggest it. This is uh, probably a gear, because you've got plus 10 combat and plus 2 to red challenges. So that's pretty cool. If we, I might equip that before glow, if we think we might have to go and defense stuff again. Cool, fire! She laughs. Ah, cool it, sweets. This is a quiet area, and what we're doing, we're not supposed to be in danger. We're just going to be taking notes and pictures, keeping track of all the flora and fauna we see. Just, uh, just don't touch anything, unless I ask you to take a sample. Everything's potentially dangerous. We don't know much about what's out there, which is why we need surveyors, even young'uns like you. The Prosaic Plains are a sparse region, like you can assume from the name. You can see things from a long way off. Utopia sees you squinting at the horizon. And what are you going to do if something's coming for you? Uh, avoid it. Good kid. Utopia approves, patting on the back. We don't need any trouble. Dis joins you. He must have come on an earlier autobus. Oh, oh. ah, good you're here, Utopia says, digging out another plaz cut of a dis. You two greenhorns are with me, for the foreseeable. Now, we don't we don't got to sniff each other's butts all the time out of here, but I do expect you all to be within yelling distance. Comms can get pretty spotty out here. You and Dis share knowing glances. You've both been sneaking out to explore long before you were officially allowed to. Utopia also hands you a surveying drone and shows you how to launch it. It'll automatically perform local scans of wherever you go, though detailed scans still need to be done manually. When you return here to the depot, it'll upload its findings to the holonet. Your job is to cover ground, see what's out there, and, so long as it isn't dangerous, record it. She slaps you on the back. All right, team, don't get yourselves killed out there, okay? Cool, okay, well, yeah, I thought we sh I thought she'd take us straight home, which is why I was dubious about doing it, but actually that was fine. So let's go home this way. The, this little gazebo is set up as a waiting area for the automated transporters, which trundle back and forth between here and the colony. A sign reads... Autobus Depot, Prosaic Plains. Sparse vegetation makes this an ideal region for resource extraction. Blue snow is mildly acidic and may corrode equipment with prolonged exposure. Please rinse in virus suits upon return. All right, let's go home. Are you sure this will end the month? Yes, go home. Plus three perception, plus one animals. We're going to max out our perception before too long. Ability to find things and sneak past things. That's pretty good. You're getting older. It's that magical time in your life, full of discoveries and possibilities, when children become adults and their bodies change in weird, wonderful, and often embarrassing ways. When you were younger, Congruence gave your class a frank presentation about preparing for the changes your bodies would experience the next few years. Which parts of the presentation was relevant to you? None of it are like a doll down here. Um... Interesting. Uh, I guess voice changing and... yeah. You and your friends giggled your way through Congruence's presentation and left with a new appreciation for the wonders of the human body. Puberty had felt like something that would happen so far in the future that it didn't apply to you. You put it out of your mind, even as you noticed Cal's voice begin to drop, the w and uh, or of Mars starting to dress differently. Until one morning you wake up and... something feels different. You just know something's off as soon as you open your eyes. Things are uh, squelchier than hell. <laughs> okay. 
Sorry for this next part. Squelcher than you expect them to be uh, down there. You were having an exciting dream and then something happened. You can already barely remember it. You just want to close your eyes again. You remember Congruence's sexual education classes and you're really not ready for their real world practical applications. After a few minutes, you sigh and muster up the courage to look under your blankets. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, we're going to deal with the mess. You wait for your parents to leave for work, calling out to you that you're going to miss breakfast if you lie around in bed. When you're sure they're gone, you carefully strip the sheets on your bed and stuff them into the recycler. You put in a requisition for new sheets from the depot and continue on with your day. That night, you find your dad waiting for you. He's pulled your privacy curtain back to show your stripped bed and looks up with a knowing smile when you enter holding new sheets. Mmm. He laughs, putting on an exaggerated detective impression. Now nah, I can only think of one reason why a teenager suddenly cares about doing his own laundry. He points at you and exclaims, Bad Jove, I think I've got it. What's up, Solana? Got something to share with your old man? You can feel your face getting red as you ignore him and make your bed, but it doesn't stop him. Ah, kiddo, it's okay to feel a little wet behind the ears. You retreat into your bunk, slam the privacy curtain closed so you can't hear him make any more jokes. Ugh, he's so embarrassing. Gain status, hormones. Teenage hormones are making you brave and rebellious. Rebellion increases tripled. What's happening? You feel on the edge today, like everything that happens feels so unfair and tragic. Like you want to punch stuff and then cry about it. Like you want to be left alone, but you also desperately want attention. It feels like a fount of new energy is starting to bubble up inside you. Dangerous, uncontrollable energy. Welcome to puberty, Solana. Is our sort of on-screen appearance going to change, I wonder? Not right now. I know it will, because I've seen some of the art for the older characters, and they do they do start to look quite different. Um, yeah, well, we're just gonna we're just gonna rest. I'm just gonna quickly stroll around and see if anyone's wanting to talk. Doesn't look like it. What should we do? We could uh, we could go and play in the park again. That's always good. Your mum is tending to her garden as you relax nearby. You're both happy to leave each other alone, but you can hear her muttering to herself as she pulls weeds. Every day, she grumbles, you'd think I was never here at all would say how some of these weeds grow. I thought that bringing only nice plants would mean we wouldn't have to weed as much, but ugh, these vertumnum plants, they're unstoppable. She pulls hard on one weed, which turns out to be a huge creeping vine that yanks out a few flowers. Ugh, I just want one place on this planet that's ours. I will help her. Plus two biology, very nice. You get down there and help your mum pull weeds for the better part of the afternoon. It's surprisingly hard work. By the end, your back and shoulders are aching and the palms on your ha of your hands are on fire. Your mum dumps a huge armful of weeds into a wheelbarrow. These go all the way to the edge of the colony, she says wearily. Whatever plant these roots belong to, they're invading my garden. She turns towards the walls and yells, You stupid pink bastards! Stay out there where you belong! <laughs> what do we want to forget? No, uh, well, I'm okay with both of those. Late pollen, early dust. So I want to pop into the shop, I think, now that we've got a, some kudos to spend and just see what we can get there. What do we got? Uh, cake, four. Plus five persuasion. Interesting. Have I already got garden trowel? I can't remember. Plus one to yellow cards. I think I'm going to save them for now. Let's just, actually let's have a look at our gear. So we're currently using Ricky, which is plus one skill on challenge win, which I think is pretty cool. I think that's all colours as well. Plus one bonus to straights. Animal <coughs> book for animals. Hop eyes, not too bad. Plus one to challenges. Red cards. I'd quite, I'd, quite, I'd quite like to open up a couple more slots because I'd like to maybe add the hop eye and perhaps this combat one as well. My combat's not too bad, but you know, it'd be good to get higher. Okay. 
So, yeah, we're doing all right. So we should go to class again. We're getting decent on biology. I'm going to do life sciences again, I think. So I think at 20 biology, we can do something else in the greenhouse. I might be misremembering that, but I think that's the case. Let's have a quick look around the kids. Uh, no, no one's got anything particularly urgent to say to us. So yeah, we'll do life sciences again. You see a notice on the engineering holoweb. Chief Engineer Instance needs someone to help with our help with after school tutoring. Literally anyone who isn't a complete idiot will do because she's desperate. Please apply. Alright, we can apply for the job. You tell Dr. Dr. Instance you're interested in the, in the job. She looks up from her hollow palm like she's just noticed you exist. Yes, you'll do. She says, nodding. The younger, slower kids have trouble keeping up with congruence sometimes. You mostly just have to pat them on the back now and then and stop them from wandering off when they're supposed to be studying. No offence, but anyone with a pulse could do it. You wait further instruction. Instant sighs, shooing you away dismissively. You know where the classrooms are. Just come when you're not doing whatever nonsense teenagers do here. So I don't know what tutoring does, but um, we'll find out in due course. Plus one to mental blue cards. I'm going to try and just get the highest hand I can because lay uh, five kudos is nice. Uh, you know, I've got lots of gear I can't use, so I'm not sure if I'll be spending money on any any stuff soon. And uh, getting the extra skills would be good. So we could do. There's no gems. How about that? Six biology for that, that's pretty good. It's Vertumnalia. Time for speeches, games and feasting. You stay hungry at the feast table. Sure, it's mostly soy rations, but it's still more food than you usually see at all one time. This year, though, there's something new. Great big tureens of glowing beans. Weird. You try to sneak some food before the speeches start, but Chief Engineer Instance catches you and smacks your hand away. Your mum gets really mad at her, and it causes a huge yelling match. Your dad directs you away from the table as Instance blames your mum for the way things are right now. Whatever that means. Your dad passes you a soy sweet to keep your tummy busy during the speeches. He's the best. Governor Udicott takes the stage and manages to calm everyone down. Welcome everyone to our fourth Vatumnalia celebration, she says, speaking through a maxophonor. Maxophonor. Her voice has been getting weaker lately and uh, can't reach across the square the way it used to. I'm proud as always to stand before you as your governor and to celebrate another year of peace and prosperity on this beautiful planet. Udicott stands, steps aside, wobbling a little as she walks, leaving Seek to complete the annual formalities. Your mum steps forward. This year's feast includes a new glow-in-the-dark food. Pixie beans are our first domesticated vitamin crop. The crowd applauds and your mum raises her hands. Credit goes to Geranium. He insisted we dedicate a third of our fields to them, so you'll also have him to thank for the light show in your toilets tonight. A smattering of laughter ripples through the crowd. Your dad chuckles nervously. Your mum's smile fades. As you know, we lost our hydroponics and microbial soil during the wormhole accident, she says. These pixie beans will make up for losses we faced with our earth crops. Udicott's weedy voice rattles through the maxifena. Maxifena, how have you pronounced that? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Let's get on with the games. Still can't do the talent show. The crowd packs away the chairs as the children gather in the square. Which competition do you participate in this year? Oh, yeah, we're not getting... Well... Not quite low creativity, honestly. Um, does it matter? Well, we did the science fair last time. Let's do bod Bot Quadrathlon again. Com directs your attention to this year's edition. A cloth-covered mountain as tall as four adults, studded with mysterious protrusions. He pulls it back to reveal... The Tower of Terror, he announces with a flourish. Test your courage with three stories of ladder climbs, followed by a death-defying leap of faith onto the Pushram mats. You, an enemy, and Cal take in the majesty of the Tower of Terror. Both of them are hooting and pumping their fists, absolutely bonkers about jumping from three stories. 
You'll all still be doing the wrestling, agility and accuracy portions of the course, but clearly this is the winner by popular vote. How about you? Are we ready? Yes. Three-part challenge, 61, plus two bonus to straights. Uh, straights is, uh, yeah, okay. So we'll try and do straights. Uh, so, I mean, two, three, two, three, four, right? Yeah. That seems good. Um, two... Three, two, three, four, five. There, so we need nineteen now. Two, three, four. that'll go six, won't it? we don't put a yellow next to it, which we won't. Have I got a four? I don't have a four, but plus one for each gem on other cards. Ooh, well, we'll use that instead then, shall we? And that'll go four. Three. Oh no, he's changed now. Well, I mean, we win. Oh, that's gone. Why did that... Oh, I used another gem card. I'm we switch to that. That's a bit better. Can't do much about that. One star. Okay. Got two toughness. You blow through the obstacle course, the basket shooting and the bot wrestling with ease, and you arrive at the base of the Tower of Terror with a determined gleam in your eye. You scale it easily, of course. It's only ladders. Sure, it's really high ladders and a huge jump, but you close just you just close your eyes and pretend you're jumping into a great big vat of pudding. Com awards you first place on the quadrathlon. Congratulations. Finally, it's time for the feast. The pixie beans are a hit. Your parents keep touting their many benefits. They grow well here. They're super nutritious, taste great, and they're really versatile. And kids love their bright, multicolour glow. Your rumbling stomach has made you grouchy. Your parents won't let you eat until they finally stop bragging about their dumb beans. You consider the options. Pixie bean soup, pixie bean salad, pixie bean chilli, even pixie bean aquafaba dessert. Everything grows, glows in the evening twilight. You sullenly shove your pixie bean everything around on your plate. You don't even want to eat them anymore. Stupid beans, stupid feast, stupid games, stupid everyone. Ugh. Every time someone turns to you, especially about how great these beans are and how great your parents are for growing them, you just get more irritated. They're just beans. It's like they love these beans more than they love you. You're probably just hungry. Screw these stupid beans. Oh, we lost a toughness. But we gained 15 rebellion. Yeah, who says you have to eat a bunch of stupid glowing gimmick beans? They're not the boss of you. You get to decide what goes in your body. Your dad is amused, but your mum isn't so forgiving. Eat your food, Solana, she says sternly. We worked hard to make this food for you. I don't care! <laughs> your dad tries to calm the situation, but your mum slams her fist on the table. The noise makes everyone nearby stop talking and turn to stare at you. Eat your damn dinner, Solana, she shouts. I'm sick of your attitude. Fine. <laughs> you want to rebel against these stupid beans, but the truth is, you're too hungry to resist. You count backwards from ten to calm yourself down so you don't blow up at your mum. Why is she smiling all the time? Ugh. You settle on glowering at her over your plate of glowing beans. She notices, but just purses her lips and turns away from you to talk to someone else. Rude. Plus two to cars with gems. That's pretty nice. You shovel food into your mouth, trying not to look like you're enjoying it. It... Okay, it is as delicious as everyone said, and you start to feel more human than the more you eat. Right, yeah, food. Food is great. You do feel better after you eat something. Everyone's in high spirits after dinner, breaking off into little groups to talk or make music together as the sky darkens for the shortest night of the year. You feel your mood improve by the minute as your friends pull you into a fun, rhythmic clapping game. As your irritation fades, you wonder if this is what Congruence meant when she warned you that your hormones would make you feel out of control sometimes. 
When you go back to your quarters to get ready for bed, your dad gives you a big hug. It's exactly what you needed. Mid dust. Uh, so yeah, so we're a bit out of whack in terms of our what we were planning to do. We might just go and do the expedition then. Uh, as we've got zero stress, that seems like a good thing to do. Our biology is over 20 now, hopefully. 25. So I think we should go and talk to our mum and see if uh, we can do something with that. Organising needs to be higher. Okay, what's our organ? Our organising is really low. Five. Uh, okay. Can we can do something in the greenhouse, perhaps? Hmm. All we can do is shovel dirt. I don't want to do that. I thought perhaps we'd be able to do more biological stuff. What about our dar? Uh, I think... Helping an animal. Plus one to strength challenges. And it's a gem card. That's actually pretty nice. Hey, Sprout. Your dad says, tossing your canteen at your chest. Do I gotta keep watering you like a plant? Because I will. Drink up or you'll shrivel up like a raisin. Help him with the animals. Your dad is helping two bristle slugs who've managed to get in, get gotten tangled in each other while, well, maybe they were wrestling. Your dad doesn't want to go into the details. He hefts up the larger one and you carefully pull apart their bristling spikes, being careful not to get jabbed yourself. Ten minutes later, they're back at it again. Your dad shrugs. Ah, the heart wants what it wants, I guess. Uh, all right, well, we've got all the car challenges. Let's talk to some of these guys. Uh, oh, biology was Cal. Some people get their sniffles during pollen, Cal says. My mum says it's because your nose thinks the pollen dust is itchy, so it turns on the floodworks to wash itself out. Want to hear a fun nature fact? Oh, we've already got one of those. You recently overheard the children learning how to count by studying hop eyes. Hop eyes have one foot and two tail forks and three stomachs and four eyes. And if you see five of them together, that's lucky, Cal laughs, finishing the mnemonic for you. Wait. How do they find out that Hoppies have three stomachs? Oh, I don't want to know. Mars. I don't know what we need for Mars. Persuasion. We're also quite low in persuasion. I'm done with Mars. I don't really want to go much further into what she's about. I'll have a chat with Tang. Oh, we need reasoning 40 to do more studying with her. What's our reasoning? It's probably not that high. 36. Eh, not too bad. We'll come back when we can do that. What about an enemy? Toughness 40. Oh yeah, we're way off that. Uh, okay, so I think we uh, let's go out and do an expedition then. We'll try and finish off the planes. We've got four events left, three collectibles, and a boss event, which would be quite nice. Let's go and do it. I think we should be able to just uh, retrace our steps all the way to how far we got previously. I can remember where we went. We came up around here, didn't we? That was where the bub thing, whatever it's called, was. So, yeah, we can't go down there, so let's go and... Oh, it's another one. You're crossing a clearing when you hear a terrible cracking, pounding sound. A bush bub bursts through the tree, tree line, barreling straight towards you. Whatever's making a bush bub run, you're pretty sure you don't want to be on the business end of it. Let's do a bravery challenge. 47. Uh, so we could do three threes, maybe? What have we got? Uh, plus one when gems, so that could be a five. Plus two to cards with gems, so that could be a four. So if we did 
four, four, five. Oh, that's oh. Why has that become seven? I don't know. Plus two to gems. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it's worth quite a lot still. A lot of twos. We could do four twos. Four of a kind. Not too bad. And plus one. Yeah, let's stick in one of these as well. How was that? One star. Okay. Too bravery. The creature pounds past you, its powerful stone like gorilla arms smashing the ground. It doesn't even seem to see you and goes around you without even looking at you. You look around, but there's no sign of whatever motivated the bushbub to run so fast. At least that's something to be grateful about. Oh uh, yeah, can't go that way. Oh, there's this. I guess I'll do this. Hey Solana. Dis greets you cautiously as you pass on the narrow path. Hey, do you want to um want me to show you something? Dis almost never makes overtures of friendship. Whatever it is, it must be pretty cool. Uh, let's uh, we're, we're we're more of an excitable person. Yes, you always find the coolest stuff. You follow him for nearly half an hour. A couple of times he stops to listen for something, then continues onward, tromping through the fields of broad top mush trees and swaying antler ferns. After a while you start to wonder if he's just lost. You're about to say something about it when he holds his hand up for silence and directs you to crawl under a huge mushroom. On the other side, you have a view down to one of the perfectly round ponds. Taking up most of it is an enormous Xeno, its legs deep underwater. It's a Balneal, Dis tells you. They live in the swamps. You usually don't see them here. This one seems totally at home. It dips its long neck and even longer mouth into the pond, sucking up water from the bottom and spewing it out of a spout at the back of its head. The spray of a beaut of beautiful turquoise water sparkles in the sun. Tiny, colourful bird-like creatures dart around it, catching the tiny fish that comes spraying out. What's it doing? I think it's eating the mud, Dis says, or something really tiny in it. You watch for a while. It sure eats a lot, he adds. So there's two more, and one of which might be a boss challenge. A series of small circular pools chained together to form an impassable body of water. You don't see an obvious route through, though the path does continue off in the distance on the other side. Let's look for a place to cross. 46, okay. Uh, right, let's just... I mean, 2, 3, 4, 5 seems pretty good. Oh no, well, we've... Oh, why is that minus one? Card becomes two. All right, hang on. Ow. <laughs> Let's do two, two, two then. Uh, we'll probably get one of ones we're not that fussed about. Maybe this one. There we go. Oh, what? Oh, it's a neighbouring. Yeah. Okay. Back out. <laughs> Let's put you in. Fine. There's a red challenge. Just trying to build on that tail. I mean, if we put that there anyway, that's not going to change it. Maybe we'll just go for a flush. Yeah. I mean, we're going to pass it. Still got a two there, so let's um two 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 let's stick these in. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. Perception plus two. There's a narrow place where two pools meet that you think you can leap over. 
These little ponds look too small to house anything really dangerous. You hope. You approach the water's edge. Leap of faith. You make it over the narrow gap. Nice. You feel empowered. Right, so we still got loads of stress. There's either one question mark and a boss or just a boss. I'm not too sure which it will be. It's a boss challenge. Can't get around it to get that collectible, so we'll just uh, click on this. You hear Dis shouting from nearby to come quick and look at this. You meet up with Dis on a curiously clean part of the path. There's no twigs, pebbles, bits of grass, or the ubiquitous daubs moth scales that litter the area. It almost looks like it's been swept clean. And there, in the middle of a perfect circle, three metres wide, is what you could only describe as a shrine. A hollow, waist-height structure made from twigs and packed snow, spark snow forms the centrepiece, and around it are deliberately spaced piles of colourful fruit, flowers and glittering stones, like an offering. Did you make this? Dis looks at you as if you've started speaking in tongues. Uh, no, he says angrily. I know you think I'm weird, but... Not this weird. Let's stake it out and wait. Perception challenge. One cast log gets plus one. So we could do four, three, four, five, perhaps. Oh, no, that will go up. Two, three, four, perhaps. Two, three. Oh, it's gone five. Four. Uh, okay, well, why don't we do that? And then we'll do all fives. It's got to be pretty good. Two, three, that'll come back down. Four, five. I'll just stick that there. Okay, so it looks like we've won that. Two stars, that's not too bad. Two perception. I'm going to max that out at some point. Yeah, cool. You hang out for hours, but don't discover anything except how boring an idea this was. Dis takes a nap. You're almost falling asleep when something shuffles into the clearing. It's a bush bub. It crawls slowly along the path. It uh, stops to pick up a pop flower. It stops to pick up a stone. When it arrives at the shrine, it carefully places the flower in the pile of flowers and the stone in the pile of stones. Then it picks up the stone and repositions it. Just so. You wonder if this creature is somehow religious, or is it trying to attract a mate with this little show of decor? There's so much you don't know about the animals that live here. Uh, keep exploring, I suppose. That, I mean, that's probably the, the end of this uh, area in terms of surveying it. Let's just go down here quickly. Not much there. It's quite pretty, though. Okay, well, we'll click on this, I guess. It's probably going home. You've reached the end of the area, yeah? Uh, we'll go home then. Three perception, one animal's friendship with this. Mid to dust to late dust. Here we go. So, uh, I think we're going to end it here because it's coming up around the hour mark. I just want to have a quick look at our sort of uh, friendships meter. So we're doing reasonably well with an enemy and Cal, pretty well with Tangent and Dis. Zero on Mars. I mean, we've basically ignored Mars, and poor Tammy is dead. Um, so yeah, so there we go. Still haven't locked, unlocked any more gear slots. I'm hoping, hopefully, we will soon. Um, I'm not sure if that's sort of triggered through here or, or you know, story beats. Not sure. 
hopefully we'll find out. But yeah, so thanks very much for watching this episode. Uh, if you enjoyed it, and I hope you did, then please do hit the like button. You know, if you could subscribe to the channel as well, that'd be amazing. And, you know, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, with that in mind, I hope to see you next time for more I Was a Teenage Exo-Colonist. Bye for now.